Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Patrick once again here with VectorVest and bringing you another update and another video on GameStop or GME and talking about the most common subject right now, which is that gamma squeeze. We're going to be getting into some theory, some speculation, and really focusing on why we feel that gamma is going to be the fuel that this rocket takes off on. So if you're ready to be enlightened, hit that like button. If that subscribe button below me is red, hit that as well. And let's get into today's video. All right, so first thing we wanna do is start talking about gamma, what it is and how to understand it. So if you're not familiar with options, Options have a few different Greeks that measure the options and how much they're gonna change, time value, and a few other things. If you really wanna get into options, especially if you're new, we do have a course that we teach here at VectorVest for beginners, which is the Options Jump Starter coming up very soon. Link is in the description below if you wanna start your options education. I highly recommend it. It's one of the best courses to get you into options and get you comfortable with them so you can start taking advantage of these kind of situations. If you're more advanced, we do also offer some more advanced options classes as well. We don't have any coming up anytime soon, but make sure to follow the VectorVest page, follow our Instagram, follow our Twitter, and I'm sure you'll be up to date whenever those classes come out. All right, with that, let's go ahead and start talking about Gamma here today. So if you've been following the GME story, a lot of people keep talking about how when you buy an option contract, a call contract, meaning you expect the stock to go up, you're buying that contract and the person who sells you that contract on the other end of the trade is buying the stock to offset or hedge their trade. Well, this is just one small part of the gamma squeeze and this whole situation with GME. While this definitely helps keep the stock afloat and helps dry up liquidity, which is the goal of a short squeeze or a gamma squeeze to keep the price rocketing higher, Gamma is actually something that a lot of people may not be familiar with, but it seems to really be the fuel that's going to skyrocket this price higher. So let's start off by talking about the definition of gamma, and then we'll get into an example. So the gamma is the rate of change in options delta per one point move or one dollar move increases over that time frame. So keep it simple. If a stock contract, an options contract, a call contract that you buy has a delta of let's say 0.5. That means for every dollar that stock price moves up, the options contract is going to increase by 50 cents. Now gamma comes into play because gamma is the rate of change of that delta whenever the stock goes up $1. So for simplistic purposes, let's say the gamma on the stock is 0.05. So that means when that option or that stock increases by $1, that delta is now going to go from 0.5 to 0.55. You may be asking yourself, what does this mean? Why do I even use it? Who cares what that is? Well, here's where it gets really interesting. When a market maker, let's say, makes that contract and he sells that call, that call contract to you, the buyer, he wants to hedge his risk and hedge his bet to make sure that it's neutral or that no matter what happens with the stock, his trade will be winning or his trade will break even at worst case scenario. So when they do that, they look at both the delta and gamma. They neutralize that trade or that selling of the call option by using two trades to hedge it. The first one is looking at the gamma. So let's say they sell you a $100 call. Well, that stock or that option has gamma. To offset that gamma, one of the more commonly used ways of hedging it is to buy far out of the money call options on that same underlying stock. So let's say the stock is trading at, well, Let's just look at GME right now. Right now it's trading around 190. So let's say they go and they sell that at the money 190 call right now. Well, to offset the gamma of that 190 call they just sold, they go out to the 205 or 210 or 250 
call options and buy those to offset that. This is where it starts getting interesting and this is why gamma really can become the fuel for this rocket. So think about how this can compound. If for every contract that they sell, they're going out and buying a further out of the money contract to hedge that gamma, then all of a sudden, as those contracts start to become worth something or start to appreciate in value, and as the price of the stock starts to head towards that out of the money contract that they bought, all of a sudden, other people have to readjust, the market makers have to readjust their trade, go out and buy further out of the money calls. This in turn gives us that fuel that as the price starts escalating and as the price starts picking up, it becomes a vicious cycle of lots of call options purchased further and further away, which keeps that price going and going and going. So that's why Gamma really can be the fuel for this rocket. Now to cover the main thoughts that you keep seeing on the Wall Street bets and on the Reddit forums, the Delta neutrality. This is where what a lot of people already are familiar with, but if you're not, I'll explain it. Now that we've offset that Gamma, there is still Delta left. The Delta is looking at that short-term price volatility where the Gamma was looking at the long-term or the bigger moves in price volatility. So now that they've hedged the Gamma out of their trade, they also want to hedge the Delta out of their trade. Delta is very easy to hedge. To hedge the Delta in a contract like this, they simply go buy the stock. So they do their equations and after they've hedged their Gamma, they have these call options out of the money they use those call options to offset some of the calls that they sold, and all of a sudden they're left with a specific number of shares that they need to buy to hedge that delta. Because a stock's delta is always gonna be at one. Because for every dollar the stock moves up, the delta represents that change, and so therefore it's a one-to-one -one change because it's already based off the stock's price. So them buying up the stock is offsetting the delta and therefore that's creating a liquidity shortage in this trade. Now there is a lot of speculation and with the GME situation, this is all theoretical because once these things start to escalate, this has never been done before. So there is no real example to go off of to judge where the peak can actually be. Now we see a lot of talk about 50,000, 100,000, whatever, to the moon that can actually be realistic just because of the fact that this is all uncharted territory. And as a retail investor, you need to know that going into this as well. Now, here's the downside that I've been thinking about when I've been going over this and researching this topic. So the downside is if this does come true or this GME does start blasting off to the moon, hitting that 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 dollar a share mark, that is going to definitely bring regulators in and what their moves will be is anybody's guess. They're most likely going to start trying to figure out a way of unwinding these trades or reduce their risk, just like they did the last time back at the middle of January when the stock went from 30 to 483 dollars a share. So you can expect some type of manipulation to try to drive the price of the stock back down. But this is why Wall Street bets and all those guys call themselves diamond hands and they talk about holding the line because as long as the retail investor that owns the shares doesn't sell, then therefore that price is going to go up no matter how much manipulation they try to do to push the price of the stock back down. Now, through the research of this, I found an interesting uh, due diligence piece over on the Reddit forums talking about as of right now, as of Friday's close, this is not current as of right now in the market on Monday, but as of Friday's close, there's roughly about 14 million shares on GME to be held by these market makers to make their call contracts delta neutral. That's great. That means that's about half of what the actual float was at the time of about 30 million shares. So even if retailers don't have as much money as the big hedge funds and market makers and all that, doesn't matter because now at this stage, they hold a large portion of the active or openly traded shares to be out in the market. So with that, this brings us to uncharted territory. This is 
possibly going to be the biggest historical change of wealth if no manipulation happens and if market makers let this trade play out. So right now, I wanna know in the comments below, if you're in GME, what are you planning on spending those tendies on once you finally sell out? Because you gotta remember, to make profit in the trade, you do eventually have to sell out, whether that be at the 50,000 mark, 100,000 mark, 500,000 mark, whatever you wanna do it at. What are you planning on using those tendies for? Let me know in the comments below. Also, in the comments section, let me know what your favorite dipping sauce is for those tendies. Personally, since I have a little one always around, my favorite sauce is Chick-fil-A sauce, but that's just me. What are you guys gonna be dipping your sweet tendies in? All right, one other thing I just wanna talk about real quick, don't wanna spend a whole lot of time about the whole subject, but if anybody watched the Thomas Petrophy video when he stated that there could possibly be 250 million shares short right now on GME, what does that mean for the stock price? Well, there's only 50 million shares available currently. They have shorted this stock if things are accurate, which so far there's a lot of uh, interesting research to back this point up, but if they own five times the amount of shares that are actually available, that means these guys are gonna have to buy their stocks five times over. That in itself is mind boggling when you start thinking about the implications that can have on this stock price. So when you go over GME and you hear people talking about the $100,000 mark, at first I laughed and most people probably would. But when you realize that even a, a big name like Thomas talking about it live on TV, stating that there's 250 million shares short on this stock and there's only 50 million shares available really starts to make things seem real and you start to realize how big this can actually be. So as long as people hold the line, which I'm not saying you should, this is not financial advice. This is just simply my opinions as a fellow retail trader that's simply holding on to GME to the moon or bust. This is just my thoughts on it. You have to do what's best for you and you have to accept the risk profile of the trade. If you're not comfortable with it, simply stay away. That's the best advice you could possibly get without talking to a financial advisor. With that being said, when that pushes that stock up and you have all of a sudden these market makers buying options to offset the options that they're selling, and all of a sudden that starts increasing that gamma and that gamma becomes more that these guys have to buy to hedge, that's going to spiral out of control and just take this thing up to the moon as of right now. Now, there could definitely be some changes that happen in the future down the line. There could be new rules or regulations that change kind of like the DTCC rule, which forces these uh, margin calls to be paid off within that hour after notice, things like that. There could be more changes to come and you best be sure that we will keep up to date with that story and bring those changes to you every single time there's something new to talk about. So if you wanna stay up to date with the GME and if you guys are diamond handing this one, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget, hit that like button, hit that share button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as we continue to grow and continue to bring some more awesome content like this. So until the next one, take care. Adios. Peace.